Hey everybody, welcome to my Pilot High and Deep channel. This is my new YouTube video channel. My name is Ken Schaus. I'll be your host as we Pilot High and Deep. It's funny because filming videos of myself and putting them out on the internet for presumably other people to look at seems a bit odd to me, I have to admit. But I'm going to do it because I know that the world is just dying to see more images of me on the internet. Damn, I look good. The stubble makes me look just like Brad Pitt. I got that damn zit, but somehow that makes me look rugged. Today I'm going to talk about first-person view quadcopter RC aircraft. I have several of these and I've been flying them and enjoying building them, flying them, playing with them. So I'm going to show you my equipment, I'm going to show you the quadcopters themselves and have a little flight uh, footage as I fly the, the, the vehicles around the property here. So uh, hope you enjoy it, the premiere video. Look forward to new videos of me in the future. Thanks for watching. Damn, smells just like roses. These are the quadcopters along with the cameras that I use to capture high definition video footage. So you can see I've got five different craft. Um, this is actually the first one uh, that I bought, and this is uh, uh, from a company called King Kong, the ET-125. It's 125 because it's 125 millimeters from this hub to this hub. This craft takes two and a half inch props, I think is the size. It has brushless motors, it has a first person view camera in it, it has a flight controller and what's called an electronic speed control unit, a four channel ESC. Um, so essentially the ESCs provide for open loop, three phase speed control of these permanent magnet synchronous motors at each corner and that's how you control the speed and the ESCs uh, uh, control the speed based on what the flight controller, which is a microprocessor built into the base of this, what they tell it to do. The flight controller has a, uh, an accelerometer and a gyroscope in it and so essentially in the modes that I fly, the flight controller is always trying to maintain a certain attitude for the craft and it will manipulate the speed of the motors to do that. Um, and then through the antenna, which I'll describe, you actually command it to move to different uh, orientations, different attitudes. Um, so essentially the theory of operation is these propellers, two of them spin one way clockwise and two of them spin counterclockwise. So these front two, this one spins this way, this one spins this way, the back two, this one spins this way, and this one spins this way. So if you uh, want to go up and down, you just increase the speed on all four equally, uh, or decrease if you want to drop. And then if you want to pitch forward, then you would increase the speed of these back props and decrease the speed of the front pop props, which would create a torque to cause you to uh, pitch forward. If you want to roll, then you decrease and increase the speed side to side. And if you want to yaw, you actually would speed up two of the propellers and slow down two, which would cause you to have a yaw action. Inside the flight controller is reading the gyroscope and knowing uh, what orientation you want and in a closed loop way it's constantly manipulating all four speeds in order to achieve that. So it's a fairly amazing closed loop control system. Pretty neat stuff. This craft it has, uh, uh, it has uh, prop guards on it so that if you run into trees and buildings and rocks on the ground hopefully you don't break the propellers. This is a fairly light craft. It doesn't have uh, the power that some of the other ones have. So this is a great starter quad because you can, it's still pretty capable, but it's not so fast that you get into trouble quick. And when you do crash, which you do crash, this one hopefully sustains less damage than some of the other ones might. Uh, the next one that I got is this one. This is a five inch quadcopter. It has roughly 215 millimeters, I think, hub to hub. And the, the diameter of the propellers is 5 inch. Um, it still has four motors. Now the ESCs are actually individual in the arms. 
Um, and this craft takes a bigger battery, draws more current, it's much faster. This probably has a thrust to weight ratio of somewhere around seven, eight times. So that means this craft can pull eight G's of acceleration is what that means. You can see it's got the first person camera on it. It's got a much nicer camera than this one does. It still has a flight controller down in the base. It has a video transmitter and this one does too. The video from this goes through the flight controller where what's called on-screen display telemetry information is added. And then it goes to a video transmitter and out this antenna. This is a 5.8 gigahertz antenna. Um, 5.8 gigahertz is, uh, it allows for small antennas, but it doesn't do a very good job of penetrating trees and other things. So it does limit the range. These two antennas are the receiver antennas from the transmitter unit that actually sends control signals uh, to the craft. These operate, I think it's one and a half gigahertz. I think that's the range, don't quote me on that. But so the signal comes to these antennas, goes into a receiver, which uh, communicates uh, to the flight controller. So this craft is really fun to fly. It's uh, quite quick, quite powerful. Um, when you crash, these props uh, give it up. They're, these are good props, but that's what you damage mostly. I did slam it into the ground upside down and had to replace the entire cage uh, on one flight. So, um, This is the next craft that I bought. And by the way, this one I built from a kit from Grayson Hobbies. It's got an uh, FPV, an Ox FPV frame. It's kind of unique because it's a plastic frame instead of carbon fiber, which makes it tougher. It also makes it heavier though. Uh, this is also an Ox FPV frame. Um, and I built it from parts that I bought at various places. And it's fairly similar to that one. It has a slightly different camera, has the same, same flight controller, same video transmitter. Uh, it does have different ESCs and different motors. Um, this one operates very similar to this one, but you can see it has a bigger frame and that allows not only to have the first person view camera, uh, but also this camera. Essentially, this, these first person view cameras give you a picture that is equivalent to old school analog standard definition television. Um, and there's quite a bit of interference that you encounter quite often when you're flying. So the, the picture is not that good. So this is a very small action camera. This is what's called the Runcam HD2. So this one will give you 1080p at 60 frames per second, and it writes it to an SD card on board so there's no interference. This gives you a high definition video of your flight. Um, this thing is designed to be pretty rugged. If you crash, hopefully you don't destroy it. Um, so obviously in order to carry this, I had to have a bigger frame. This camera would not have fit uh, on this frame at all. So I put it on here and I actually zip tie it down when I go to do the flight. Um, this is a uh, GoPro uh, Session 5, I think is the name of it. Uh, it's roughly one inch square. This one gives 4K video even. Um, this one uh, is quite a bit more expensive than this. Uh, the reason I bought this one is not necessarily for the 4K, but this one is a little bit flaky with the software. So I think this one will be better. I haven't even used this one yet, but uh, I will be switching to that. I did 3D print this little stand uh, to match this camera, so I'll be 3D printing another stand to fit the GoPro in there. Finally, I have these two small craft. Uh, these two right here, and uh, they're designed for indoor flying. They're so small that if you try to fly them outside and there's any wind at all, they just get blown away. Uh, but they're also so lightweight that if you crash them into your TV or something, you don't just break the crap out of everything. Uh, so they're a lot of fun. This is called an Acrobee. It actually uses brush commutated DC motors. Um, and those motors wear out because the brushes make physical contact with the commutator and the motor. They're not nearly as powerful or as efficient. Uh, uh, for indoor flying, some people actually really like these because of the fact that they're not as powerful. Uh, it's arguably easier to fly. This is the same size and everything. These are uh, 65 millimeters from corner to corner. Uh, but this one actually has brushless motors. 
uh, with a four channel ESC built into it. So this one is considerably more powerful, more responsive really, I would say. It's not necessarily even that these motors are not powerful, it's that they don't spin up and spin down as quickly as the brush commutated motors, as the, I'm sorry, the brushless motors do. So this one is quite a bit faster, quite a bit more maneuverable and everything. I really do enjoy flying this one. Um, so, but both of these are a lot of fun to fly inside. This is the equipment that I actually use when I'm doing uh, uh, the flight. This is the stuff that allows me to see through the first person view camera on the craft and it also allows me to control the craft. So these are the goggles that I use. They're from a company called Fat Shark, so these are fairly expensive. But essentially you put these on your head and they have little screens inside uh, so that both eyes see the same picture, but you're looking at the video signal coming from the craft. Um, and that's all you can see. So it's kind of a funny thing because you're, you're sitting there blind except for the view, but that's kind of what you want because these craft go pretty fast and so you don't want to be distracted or having to look at some small little screen. This actually has what's called the diversity unit. I use uh, the video receivers that I use are from a company called LaForge. And so these two modules come from LaForge and you can see I've got two different types of antennas. And so the unit will actually switch between the two based on what, uh, which one has the best reception. This is an omnidirectional antenna. So this one uh, receives uh, signals uh, in a 360 degree radius around it, uh, essentially equally. This is a patch antenna, so it only receives signal in a narrow cone in front of it. This receives, this has a, it's an 8 dB gain, and I forget this one is 2 or 3. This one, the point is, will receive much weaker signals if you are in its pattern. So the idea is, as you're flying the quadcopter around, normally you're using this one. But if you orient yourself so that this is pointing in a direction where you want to fly far away or behind some trees or something, then the unit will switch to this one to give you a better view. Obviously, if you don't have a good view out the camera, then you can't fly the craft and you will crash. So that's the reason for the fancy technology with the diversity uh, dual receiver setup. And this is the transmitter. So this is what I use to actually fly the quadcopter around. And you can see it has two gimbals. So moving this up and down controls the throttle. Moving it left and right controls the yaw, which causes the craft to spin like that. Um, and then this controls the pitch. So if you want to pitch forward, you, you move this stick up. And if you want to pitch back, you pitch it down. And this controls the roll. So if you want to roll to the left, then you move this. And roll to the right, you move that. Uh, this unit also has telemetry, so it actually receives information back from uh, the quote-unquote receiver on the craft. So I can get things like my battery voltage, the current uh, that's being drawn, and so on. I've also got it set up so that in the view and the goggles I have information about how much current it's pulling, how long I've been flying, how many milliamp hours I've pulled out of the battery, the signal strength from this guy, so I know if I'm starting to go out of range of this. Um, so it's pretty sophisticated technology. It's kind of amazing. Turns out on YouTube, until you're something other than a beginner, I don't know the exact policy, but you're only allowed to upload 15 minute videos. Uh, so I'm actually having to split this video into two parts. So the FPV footage that I told you I'd show has to be in part two. So I'm going to end this video now. Watch part two if you want to see uh, onboard footage of the quadcopter flying around. So thanks for watching. See you in the next part.